Good morning. I'm here to tell you about how I found my passion. When I was six, I started playing basketball, and every day after school, I was either at basketball practice or somewhere on the East Coast at a game. But I never had a passion for it. Basketball was just something that I did because I was really good at it, and I thought it was what I was supposed to do. My mother could tell that I wasn't passionate about basketball, and she would tell me that if it's not my passion, then it's probably not what I'm supposed to do. She told me that whatever my passion is should be on my mind from the time that I wake up to the time that I go to bed every day. So at my school, the basketball team study hall room was right next to the robotics lab, and I would always hear them working with loud power tools, and it was always hard to ignore the noises. And one day, during my sophomore year, I was walking past the lab, and I saw one of my friends in there. So I went in to say hi, and she started telling me that she was helping the robotics team for extra credit in a science class. So I started tagging along with her to the meetings every day. And eventually, she got extra credit and stopped coming. But I stayed because I always wanted to know how technology works and how concepts are formed. When I first joined the team, my role was to put everything wherever anyone told me to put it because I joined in the middle of the season and they had already finished the design and concept phase of the build. When we finally finished building and walked into the Chesapeake Regional Competition at the Baltimore Convention Center, I realized that the robotics competition was just like a basketball game, only the arena was filled with hundreds of teenage innovators from all over the country who was there to share their passion for robotics and engineering. There is when I had my realization into wanting to do and be more. Once the competition was over, I said to myself that I no longer want to be just a builder. I wanted to come up with a program and a design for a machine that did exactly what we wanted it to do. So ironically enough, the next year's season um, task was for us to create a robot that played basketball in the FRC game. <laughs> in the FRC game, Rebound Rumble. And we were given a six-week period to build our machine, and this was the original sketches that we came up with in the lab. And after two weeks, we were already testing to see how, ball, how far the balls would actually shoot. And this was our final product, the robot that we named Para, competing in the New Jersey competition. Our team also plays with smaller robots called Vex. And when I went to my first solo Vex competition, my robot constantly broke down. And I couldn't fix it because I didn't know how to problem solve. So I kept troubleshooting for things that had nothing to do with the problem. But eventually, I got my robot back working. And since then, my confidence in solving things independently has grown as I have faced more challenges. Now I build with the understanding that problems are going to come when building, but every problem that I face will help make the next solution stronger. Robotics has changed the way that I feel about school. I now view it as my new training facility. So just like an athlete who spends hours in the gym, I now spend hours in classes and labs trying to learn more about engineering and how concepts are formed. Everything that I'm learning in my math and science classes are starting to have a purpose, and I understand why I'm learning it. Because for me, it was always hard to learn when I didn't know why I needed to know something. But now, when I hear terms like trajectory and parabola, they have a meaning because we had to calculate it so that our robot could play basketball. Robotics is different from being in a standard classroom because in science class, we will always watch the teacher perform an experiment, and she will always do it correctly. But the important part of learning is making mistakes. When you do things yourself and mess up, eventually you'll learn how to fix it, and you'll learn what can work and what doesn't work and why it does or why it doesn't work. So last summer, I thought I knew for sure that I wanted to be an engineer, so I enrolled in the Johns Hopkins Engineering Innovation Program. But after sitting through my first three-hour lecture on materials engineering on the first day, I said to myself that engineering isn't it for me. <laughs> but, then, but then I realized that that was OK. Because when you are young and trying to figure everything out, sometimes you have to start backwards and find out what you don't like. I had to learn not to overestimate my abilities and realize that it's OK to get to a point and say that this is not exactly what I thought it was going to be. But then it's up to me to find the path to what actually holds my interest. 
Being in that program made me realize that I want to work with things that are already put together. So in the fall, I will be studying computer science and business administration. Teenagers know where we want to go. We just don't know how to get there or where to find the help. But being on the robotics team has provided me with help from my team mentors, my peers, and local robotic supporters. This year, I'm the captain of the robotics team. And I promote robotics in Baltimore City and do the play-by-play -play announcing at local competition for middle school students. Robotics has provided me with many opportunities that I would have never experienced at this point in my life. For the past four years, our team has been competing in the VEX World Championship, and last year while there, I met teams from Saudi Arabia, Spain, and many other countries. I'm sharing my robotics experience with you to promote dream chasing. Whether your dream is to be a doctor, an athlete, a musician, or a fashion designer, just find something that you are passionate about and find out what you can do right now to get you where you want to go, and don't let your age or the city that you're from stop you. Thank you.